just yesterday uh, rbi released a paper about regulating fintech so i don't know whether to put mumesh akkar or salt i'm still like trying to figure out whether this is good news or bad news um because uh, i do think uh, uh, there is one aspect of it i think which which i i feel very strongly about that indian consumers are very naive uh, in terms of digital products itself india india is seeing internet and digital products natively probably for the first time you know america for example is a country you know had like every house had a pc back since 90s right so india in some sense is a is not a digital native we are all like you know adapting you know into this new digital world i'm not but i'm i'm very confident that in it, like it's not like the users are not smart or anything as such it's just that there has been enough time education awareness that's been there for them to do the right thing uh, and i honestly think financial services is actually a bit of a complex domain where you need help even the richest actually use financial advisors Mm. right uh because you become really smart you make a lot of money but doesn't mean you can manage your money you have people who professionally manage money for you uh so it i think it holds true even for you know when you go down to a nola driver or so on which is why there's so much of importance in our culture around women coming into our lives and managing money especially in indian households you know that savings in those steel boxes and you know mothers and wives and grandmas you know being like actual the financial advisor or you know gatekeeper in in the family uh so which, which is why i think it is important that there is innovation that enables invisible movement of money for indian sectors that's truly where the innovation layer is as deepak was saying um uh, you know you should be able to like set a mandate and save 10 rupees 50 rupees 100 rupees into an rd every day right if rd is your preferred instrument uh that you, we should be able to build uh products which makes it like almost like a self driving car we the concept of self moving money or self driving money should come uh, and and we have the right rails for it so i see that it's not that you don't need to be also not in a hurry to make this happen so you know if you take a 5 to 10 year view what else will we be doing in a way right i mean enough there's so much on the ui side and you know cash backs and scratch cards but what else are we going to be innovating on so it will be around this concept of you know self driving money i i think so now when i think about it that way uh, i think uh, while it is very important for uh new companies to get started uh and not be you know highly highly regulated i mean financial services is already regulated um now if rbi is so i propose to have like a two tier regulatory ecosystem where somebody like an rbi regulates banks and you know or financial institutions so to speak and let allow the banks to then you know create their second layer of you know architecture of who they want to partner with for example uh, if you've heard india is actually a model of business correspondence so you know which already enables uh, someone to serve on behalf of a bank and do what they want all of these new things like a neo bank and everything are all is a skin a new skin on the same thing called the business correspondent um you know uh, that the model kind of like those light touch models exist in the mutual fund world there is something called an ria who is a registered investment advisor who sebi really takes seriously to make sure that hey roshan you get all the right information when you're investing so it's actually a very light touch regulation you need mm-hmm. to pass a test to become a registered investment advisor you apply online and you know you study for it and you actually get that license so it's not something where you have to set up like 100 crores to get a license to become an ri in the sebi world i think there are really good models uh, but i do think it should be two tier in the sense there is never going to be rbi will never be able to let's say um, look at like 100 or you know 1000 fintechs and be able to figure out what they are doing so it has to be like you know it's pretty much like the uidi problem as well so right. in aadhar 
if everybody is using other there's no chance uh, uidi can be like auditing and you know doing things so you have to set up the right ecosystem uh, and outsource important parts of this work and trust them to like set these two yeah. layers of systems uh, so uh, i think uh, currently uh, there are thoughts about like who should be regulated and why should they be regulated uh, it, uh, the first nail has been on the payments businesses so earlier payment gateways as we popularly know uh, were never regulated uh, right because they were only doing a tiny amount of transactions in the overall scheme of india's financial services now they are a major part because digital is becoming so big so the first nail was on the payment so rbi has come up with a license called a payment aggregator so anybody who is in the business of moving money <laughs> has to now get regulated uh, i expect this to like slowly kick off into other you know kind of areas especially like um, things like neo banking where people are becoming the end interface for users and also lending you know where you're you're not you're giving the right set of information to the users and so on um so i think the right balance of this is also to create a self regulatory architecture for us as a fintech ecosystem because if we don't self regulate ourselves then then we should expect the regulator to come and regulate right that's right. that's going to be <laughs> uh, we either form these common grounds and rules and hold each other accountable as a community as an ecosystem if not we should be prepared for the regulator to come because you know regulation is always about it's a 99% versus 1% problem you know mm-hmm. to basically find that 1% bad apples 90% of the people have to go through the pain so so if we can avoid it work collaboratively i think we can come up with an architecture which enables innovation and at the same time ensures that the financial system is stable as well